tell you what, I got my fire poker. It's spiritual. And I'm going to stoke the fire. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Nobody loves us like Jesus loves us. Ain't nobody like Jesus. Amen. I just got to say that. I know some of you get tired of hearing that. But I'm going to tell you something. We're going to stand before him before us. Before we can blink an eye hardly. I mean, it's that close. I love it. I can't wait. Until that time happens, let's plow the fields and reap the harvest. Amen. All right, as the choir comes this morning, welcome to Lighthouse Baptist Church, and we're glad you're here, first time visitor. As the choir comes this morning, let's give him a turn to page 134. We'll sing the first and the last, to God be the glory. Amen. I love it. Amen. They sing the preaching of your word. Lord, we love you in Jesus' name. Amen. I don't know about you, but I'm getting pumped. Amen. I can almost see the life of the Lord. Yes, thank you, Lord. Don't pay no attention to my voice. Just listen to the words. Amen. Amen. Bless the choir, I hope you out sing me. Amen. Let's open our hearts this morning and be receptive to God. God's here. He wants to talk to us. He wants to love on us. He wants to just tell us things that we need to know. Amen. For our good and for His glory. All right, brother. <laughs> Spoken 
special prayer request this morning. You like make it known? We're gonna do that by lifting hands. Well, he knows each one. Dale takes the drum. Lord, we thank you for this day. Lord, we pray, God, that you just take this offering. Amen. Lord, use it for that build of thy kingdom, Lord, that your word might be spread through this little lighthouse here in this community. Lord, we pray, God, most of all, for the soul that might be lost yeah. on the way to a devil's hell. We pray, God, that they would be the same. Lord, that they'd accept that eternal gift of life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You can be seated. Did we have any birthdays this past week? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. Big shot. Big shot. I don't know where he is. I don't have an anniversary, but Mary Lou called this morning. And she's sick. And, uh, it's her and Benny's 64th wedding anniversary. Amen. Amen. He's in heaven with my husband. And we were all really good friends, and we did a lot of things together. Yeah. And I can just imagine him and Benny up there together. Uh, That's a scary thought. Benny, Benny was a real good friend. Even one of my great-grandsons thought he was his grandpa. Yeah. But everybody prays for Mary Lou. She's really been sick. Amen. Stay to her. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary, God bless you. Happy anniversary to you. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'll never forget. I think they was probably listening or watching that night. And I wanted to tell you what. We went trout fishing one time. And we stopped in a parking lot, and Benny and Buddy Lowry was out in the parking lot. And we were looking for them. And all of a sudden, I caught them in the corner of my eye. I looked around, and Benny had a, a buggy. He went to the grocery store, and here he come with Buddy in the, in the buggy. <laughs> I was telling like I never knew. <laughs> we got the car left. <laughs> Good friend. Man. He'd do anything in the world for you. I know Mary Lou missed him a lot. I tell you, that song will be a little late. I'm getting more homesick every day. Yeah. I had a lady tell me not long ago, she said, I'm not ready to go. If you knew him like I know him, yeah. you'd be ready to go. Amen. Yes. God's so good. Yeah. Oh. I told this morning that we were talking about the Holy Spirit. I said, you know, I told about when I was in the hospital. They said, maybe you might not. You may not wake up from this anesthesia. I said, I will wake up. Maybe not on this side. Mm. On the other side. Amen. That's right. Yes. I told him, I had told him many people this, but I got a good doctor. And Cindy probably remembered it. Do you remember when I woke up? They were dancing around me, and two nurses and my doctor. And I woke up, when I woke up, they had Macarena playing on the. <laughs> on the Tape player or something. 
And then we we'll let him have a go. Macarena. Macarena. <laughs> <laughs> well, they said they tried that to get him to wake up because he wouldn't wake up. <laughs> yeah. I wanted to go back to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. All right. Who's saying this? Me, Shake. Can you give it Bye. 
by the grace he has extended. Oh, I'm amazed at the mercy I have found. I could never earn his love on my own. Yet every time I come before his throne, I stand redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. I stand redeemed before the great I am. When he looks at me, he sees a nail scarred hand that bought my liberty. I stand redeemed. Aren't you glad of that? Amen. In His grace. Amen. Even at my best, I am unworthy. I have nothing yes. I can give. A broken life is all I have to offer. Yet it's a priceless gift to him. Bitter and sin will never fade away. But I can come before him unashamed. I stand redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. I stand redeemed before the great I am. When he looks at me, Sees the nail scarred man that bought my liberty. I stand redeemed. I stand redeemed by the blood of the man. I stand redeemed before the great I am. When he looks at me, he sees. The nail scarred hands that bought my liberty. I stand redeemed. I stand redeemed. I stand Amen. Well, praise the Lord. Amen. Don't it feel good to be redeemed? Amen. 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 Redeemed by the precious blood of the Lamb. Amen. Amen. How many of you know there was a price paid that day? That's right. Amen. Amen. God gave us His only begotten Son. Yes. Amen. That whosoever will believe yes. and come to Him by faith, how many of you know they can be redeemed? Amen. Right. Amen. I hope everybody in here is redeemed, but I yes. hope if you're not redeemed, I pray. Before you leave this place, you'll be redeemed. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Sins washed away and made white as snow. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Ain't it good? There, there's a, don't you feel there's an excitement in the air today? Amen. Yes, sir. There's an excitement in the air. I feel like a little boy and the fair used to come. Yeah. And the school would give us free tickets, buddy. Yes, and we didn't have to pay nothing to get in. That's right. And I feel like a kid in the, at the fair. Amen. <laughs> but it's even better than that. I'm at church. Amen. I'm with God's people. Amen. And I tell you what, boy, to get one of them corn dogs. And, man, I tell you what, some of that mustard and cotton candy. Oh, that was some good stuff. Amen. I tell you what, how I many of y'all know God's better than that? Amen. 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 Y'all laughing at me. Y'all know. Y'all got them stories too. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Praise the Lord. All right. Okay, children, y'all want to go to Children's Church. Miss Angela and Miss Ashley is going to take you today. And uh, they got some crafts and some snacks and all kind of stuff. So I think you're going to go. Are y'all going to go uh, to the fellowship hall? Okay. So if you'll go back at the back, Daniel, I think they're going to go down to the fellowship hall today. Amen. 
All right. Praise the Lord. Amen. We appreciate our children today. Amen. We appreciate our workers uh, being faithful uh, to, to minister uh, to our children. And uh, I appreciate that. Amen. And, uh, what a blessing that is. Amen. All right. If you will, uh, while they're uh, uh, exiting and out, if you will, turn your Bibles to Luke chapter 10. And I want us to look at a few verses of Scripture. If you will, stand to your feet and let's honor God's Word. And uh, let's read a few verses of Scripture. Luke chapter 10. And uh, let's look at verses 17, 18, 19, and 20. And thank you for tuning in by Facebook. Amen. And, and uh, look, we need to pray for Brother Slats. He's a little sick. Uh, has been for a few days. And uh, Brother, we love you. And we're praying for you. And I want you to pray for Brother Slats. And thank you for everybody that's tuning in by Facebook, even a lot of people that is not tuning in now, but they'll listen to us later. Amen. So I want you to uh, share uh, share this uh, video on your Facebook. And and, uh, and how many of you know social media can be a good way to get the gospel out? Amen. There's negatives to that also. But how many of you know, I believe that in this day, that social media can be a good way to get the gospel to somebody that needs it. Amen. All right, Luke, set, uh, Luke chapter 10, and let's look at uh, verses um, 17. And the 70, they returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. And Jesus said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Yeah. Verse 20, Notwithstanding in this, rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Pray with me. Father, we love you this morning. And uh, Lord, you put this on my heart just a few days ago. And uh, and Lord, I've tried to the best of my ability, uh, Lord, to study this and to be led by the Holy Spirit of God to preach a message on rejoice because our names are written in heaven. And I pray, God, would you use me today. God, bless each one that's here. Bless the visitors that are here. And uh, Lord, uh, I just pray God just do a work in our hearts. Do a work in this place. And God, may we leave here today saying, God, you've met with us. And Father, we ask all this in Christ's name. Amen. All right, you can be seated. Thank you for standing. Amen. As I look at this uh, passage of Scripture, the Lord brought this thought to my mind. Uh, rejoice uh, because your names are written in heaven. Amen. Now, how many of you know that that to a to an, uh, a non-believer, their names are written on the earth, and yes. that's in Jeremiah. Amen. Right. Uh, but to a child of God, the Bible says that when we come to Jesus by faith and we ask Jesus to save us, that our names are placed in the Lamb's Book of Life. Yeah. Amen. Right. And you say, preacher, how do you know that? I'll prove it to you. Amen. Yeah, I'll read some scripture to you in a minute. Amen. But here, let me give you a little background on what's going on uh, in uh, Luke chapter 10. Uh, Jesus sent the 70. These were not the disciples, but they were followers of Jesus, and he sent them out. And he says, uh, take no money, uh, take no, nothing to eat. And he says, I want you to just go in my name. And he said, I want you to tell people uh, that the Messiah has come, that Jesus had come. And he says, when men, when, when they uh, greet you, he said, you offer them peace. But he's, he made a profound statement. He said, if they don't receive you, he said, let me tell you what to do. He said, just take the dust, just shake the dust yeah. off your feet yeah. and be on your way. That's Amen. Right. Did you know this morning, there's a lot of people that won't accept what we carry to the world. Yeah. They won't accept uh, the gospel message of the Lord Jesus Christ. I was speaking to a man on the phone yesterday. Um, and the last thing I told him was, Jesus loves you. Amen. And he couldn't respond to that. Amen. He couldn't respond to that. He was probably not a believer. Because if he would have been, he would have probably said, yes, and Jesus loves you too. Amen. Amen. But how many of you know that, 
this morning that, that we're not the majority. But you and I, as a Christian, as a believer, we're the minority. Yes. But because, because God said there is a remnant that is walking by faith yes. with the Lord Jesus Christ, yes. that His Spirit and His mercy is still working today. That's Amen? Right. That's right. And I tell you what, you can agree with me that we live in, in very dark times. Yes. Those things that we see that that years ago, I would say, surely, surely, I would have never lived to see these things. Sin. People are just not ashamed to sin. I mean, they're just out in the open. Let everything go. Amen. How many of you know sin is abomination to God? It is. Amen. Let me, uh, let me talk to you just a few minutes about these scriptures we read here. So these 70, they came back. They came back and, and they were able to even perform miracles. I believe they were even able to heal people, Mama. And they were able to do great things in the name of Jesus. How many of you know there's power in the yeah. name of Jesus? Yeah. There's power. There's wonder-working power in the name of Jesus. Yeah. The Bible says in Philippians that at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow. Yeah. And every tongue will confess. Right. One day that He is Lord. Amen. They may not bow here, and they may snicker, and they may shun us, but one day they'll stand before a holy and a righteous yes, God, sorry. and they'll realize that Jesus was the way, the truth, and the life. Yes. So they, the, the 70, they came back, and, and uh, they were just so excited. They were rejoicing because the Spirit's were subject unto them. Yeah. Let me just make a statement this morning that I'm no match to Satan. Satan has over 6,000 years of experience. Yeah. In every sense, the fall of Satan in Isaiah chapter 14, how many of you know that, that God had made him a uh, angelic being and he was of high authority in heaven? But he made a statement one day and said, I will exalt my throne above God. How many of y'all know there's no greater than God? Right. And you know what? God cast him out of heaven and the third part of the angels that was under him. Did you know that ever since that day, there's been a warfare in the world? Yeah. First of all, Satan came in the garden and deceived man. They deceived Adam and Eve. They fell into sin, and because of that, man dies. And the Bible says that that sin has passed down through all generations. But here, the seventy, they came, and they was and they was rejoicing because uh, when the seventy uh, they returned, they were full of joy. Because they realized that, that Jesus, that was a powerful name. Even without, uh, his, even without Jesus' his physical uh, presence, uh, was, uh, they were able to uh, have authority over demons. Right. And how many of you know that, that you and I, that we have authority over Satan right. today? Yep. Because greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. So I'm no match to Satan, but I know one that's living in me that is. Amen. Because I've read the last chapter. And we'll read a few verses of Scripture in a minute, but the Bible says that, that he would be bound, hand and foot, and he'll be cast into a lake of fire to ever be tormented there in hell. But the 70, they came and, uh, and they were full of joy uh, because they actually had power in the name of Jesus. Yep. Even when Jesus wasn't there, uh, they still had the physical presence of the authority that they could uh, have dominion over the demons. To this, Jesus testified that he'd watched Satan. I want you to notice the verse of Scripture here in, uh, in uh, verse 18. And he said unto them, and Jesus said this word, and he said, Behold, Satan as lightning 
fell from heaven. In other words, Jesus told them, he testified that he had watched Satan fall from heaven like lightning. That's right. A reference to the judgment of Satan when he rebelled against God and he was kicked out of heaven. That's in Isaiah chapter 14, verses 12 through 14. We don't have time to read it. But you know what only you know what else verse 18 affirms to us today? It affirms that not only uh, does this affirm uh, the pre-existence of Jesus and that he was involved in Satan's judgment, but it gives us insight into how the devil was sentenced to the earth. He was sentenced to the earth, setting the stage for the angelic conflict and the creation of mankind. Isaiah 6 and verse 12, um, Ephesians 6 and verse 12, the Bible says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and against powers and against rulers of darkness of this world, against principalities, uh, against wickedness and uh, in high places. This morning, as a believer, how many of you know that, that we wrestle with Satan? How many of you know that, that, that we wrestle with temptation? Just because we're saved, does it, does it cause us not to, uh, to struggle? But because of Satan being cast to the earth, that was the beginning of a conflict of the creation of mankind. It also shows that the spiritual warfare ministry of the 70 was a continuous of the defeat of Satan. Yet, as special as this spiritual authority was, it was not to be the followers' primary source of joy. More important than having wicked spirits submitting to them, to them was having their names written in heaven. Right. And let me say that, uh, that I, I've been in places before to where that I could actually feel such a demonic force. Yep. Yeah. And let me tell you, friends, that is real. Yep. It is real. Right. Because let me tell you this. So everything that God stands for, the devil has a counterfeit. In other words, he don't stand for. That's right. And the Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities, against powers, yeah. against rulers of darkness in high places. Let me tell you, friends, Satan is the god of this world. Yeah. He's the god of this world. And how many of you know he's deceiving people day by day to follow him? Yeah. That's sad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's deceiving people. I mean, I believe the demonic force of Satan and demonic possession is so great in the day that we live in today. Yeah. How yeah. can a person in their right mind go in, in a school and shoot innocent children? Something forced them and something caused them to do that. Boy, Amen? Great. So, as a, as a believer, when God saves us, how many of you know that we're taken out of that darkness? And the Bible says that we're passed from darkness unto light. Right. Amen? So, in other words... We got a divorce from old Satan. Amen. Yeah. We're no longer a child of Satan, but a child of God. Yeah. And let me tell you, friends, that's when the fight starts. Right. Yeah. That's when the demonic fight starts. Yeah. Because you're standing for God, and the evil one is there to yeah. try to defeat you. Yeah. Oh. But I am so glad that I am safe and secure yes. in yes. the hands of Jesus. Yes. Amen. Yes. Aren't you glad that you're safe and secure? He tells us in John 10 that we're in the Father's hand and no man can pluck us Amen. out of the Father's That's hand. Right. Ain't that good? Amen. That's good brother. The blood of Jesus. Yes. You know what? The blood of Jesus defeated Satan. Amen, brother. You know what? The blood, we talked about it yesterday, the blood covers our sins. Every sin that we... Think about this, the, the power of salvation. Jesus yeah. told the 70, he said, that's good. He said that you've got dominion, and you've got uh, uh, dominion over the devils. 
And you're able to heal even without not my presence. But he says, and in my name, you can do a lot of great things. But he said, rather rejoice because your name is written in heaven. Amen. Amen. Ain't that good? Amen. So this morning, I'm glad that, that I have authority over Satan. Amen. I can tell him in the name of Jesus to flee and through the blood of Jesus he's defeated and the devil has to tuck his head and run. Amen. Amen. And I tell you what, there's more and more of that we need to do. God's people need to do. Amen. Because if we don't tell Satan to go, he's going to continue to aggravate us. Amen. Right. He'll continue. How can, how, how can Satan aggravate us? Temptations. He'll put things in front of us. Right. Amen. And, and friends, a lot of times we're not a match to those temptations. But one inside that lives in us is. That's Amen. Right. Yeah. We're, um, and let me just say this. And, and Jesus told him here in, in, verse, uh, in, in verse 20. He said, it, it's good and rejoice. But not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Amen. There is a book in heaven, and it's called the Lamb's Book of Life. Amen. Did you know that, Jody, in the Lamb's Book of Life, that every name of the born-again believers are written in the Book of Life? Amen. That's right. And not only, not only is there a book, the Lamb's Book of Life, but the Bible says there's books also in heaven. Amen. I want you to turn with me to Revelation chapter 20. I want you to turn there with me. In Revelation uh, chapter 20. And uh, in verses 11 and 12. Now here we see a picture of the final judgment. How many of you know there's seven judgments in the Bible? And here's number seven. Here's the final judgment. The scripture says, And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose earth face the earth and the heavens fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were open. Now that's plural. That meaning there's more than one book. That's right. And he says... And, uh, and he says, And another book was opened, which is the book of life. Yes. And it says, And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. Yes. In Revelation chapter 2 and verse 27. Revelation chapter 22 Revelation is 22. Revelation is 22 and verse 7. He said, Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book. And I wrote that down because there's a scripture in 22 that talks about our names in the book. Amen. Verse 19, and if any man shall take away from the, from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life yep. and out of the holy city and from the things which were written in this book. Right. Let, me say, let, me, let me tell you this. In Philippians, uh, you don't have to turn with me, but in Philippians chapter 4, Paul mentioned the book of life in Philippians chapter 4 and verse 3. He says, And I entreat thee also, true yoke fellow, help those women which labored with me in the gospel with Clement also and with other my fellow laborers whose names are writ whose names are in the book of life. So, in other words, Revelation chapter 20 tells us in Revelation 20, there's the judgment, the seventh judgment. And this is where the, the, the judgment of the lost people. And it says that the, the dead, the small and the great, it don't matter what your title was on this earth, 
But if you're not a born again believer, you'll be in this judgment. And it's the judgment, uh, the great white throne judgment. Yep. And he says, now let me get some books here. Yeah. And he says that the books were open, which was plural. Amen. Yeah. You know what's written in those books? Your works. Yep. That's what's written in those books. Yep. Did you know to a sinner, to an unbeliever, that God will open up those books? And you know what He'll do? He'll see all the times that somebody came and knocked on your door. Yep. And said, I want to invite you to so-and-so church. And do you know Jesus as your personal Savior? Does Jesus in your heart? Yeah. Come on, brother. I don't want anything to do with that. And you shut the door and you shun them. Or maybe you went to a church. Maybe you went to one of your child's programs at church. And you heard the gospel message about how that Jesus died on the cross. And how that He shed His blood for you. And the Holy Spirit of God was dealing with you because you knew you needed Jesus. But you know what you did? You shut Him out. I'm a firm believer today that there's different degrees of hell. Yeah, yeah that's what the Bible says. Did you know that every time that you reject Jesus, that it is written in those books? Yeah. And I believe greater is your punishment because you rejected the Lord Jesus Christ. Greater is your punishment. But he says, not only that, but he said there was another book. And he said it is the book of life. Yes. And in that book, everybody that had received Jesus by faith, their names are recorded in the Lamb's book of life. Let me ask you this morning, is your name there? In other words, God, I believe, will open that book. Yeah. And there, where your name was supposed to be, guess what? It was blank. Yeah. It was blank. Your name was not there. There was a place for your name to be written. Yeah. But it was not there. You know what they would do then? They would bound them hand and foot and they would cast them into a lake of fire. Into a place of outer darkness. And you know, that's for eternity. That's right. No end. He said it was like a bottomless pit. I believe in other words, you'll just keep falling. It's the place where the worm died not, the fire is not squinched. Every time that you would reject Jesus. But here in Luke chapter 10, but Jesus is telling the 70, He said, but look, He says, it's good that you can do all these great things in my name, but He said, rather rejoice because your name is written in heaven. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but today I'm happy and I'm rejoicing because my name is in the Lamb's book of life. Preacher, how do you know that? Because one day, by faith, I ask Him to come into my heart. Yeah, yeah. Did you know that the Bible says that many will stand before Him in that day and they'll think that they were okay. But He'll say, Lord, Lord, have I not prophesied and I not cast out devils, done all these wonderful works? But He says, I never knew you. Yeah, yeah. Because you never by faith reached out and asked Jesus to save you. You was dependent on your church membership or your baptism. Let me say, friends, that ain't going to get you there. That's right. It's through the Lord Jesus Christ. Right, it's only through the Lord Jesus Christ will we go to heaven. So in other words, here Jesus was telling the 70, He says, I want you to rejoice because, number one, you have a relationship with God. Amen? Amen. Amen. How many of you know that when we, by faith, ask Christ to come in our heart, that we take up a relationship with Him. Right. Amen. We become in a, in a marriage covenant with Him. We're the bride, and He's the groom. Amen. Ain't that wonderful? Right. Amen. Not only that, but you think about this. 
that we rejoice because we are citizens of the kingdom and we're headed towards glory. Amen. Yeah, amen. Lord, the Bible tells us that heaven is a place that I have not seen nor ear heard, neither entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for That's us, right. for him. That's right. So, in other words, we rejoice because our name is written in the Lamb's book of life. Right. This final judgment, the seventh judgment, we won't be there. Because we'll stand before Jesus at the judgment seat of Christ. We won't give an account of our sins. We won't give an account whether we're lost or saved. We'll give an account of our stewardship. But our salvation is sealed in the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. And not only that, but he says, he says, rejoice to know that our names are written in the Lamb's book of life. You know what? That Lamb's book of life. And you know what? Once that name is put there, it can't never be erased. Ain't that good? God don't hold no eraser. Amen. Ain't that good? Hallelujah. He don't hold no eraser. Well, preacher, I ain't always did what I, what I should have done. I haven't either. That's why there's daily repentance. That's why he says if we would confess our sins that he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. This morning, what are you rejoicing in? Did you know that, that people, they, they rejoice? You know what the definition of rejoice is? I knew you would, I knew you would have asked me that, so I wrote it down. <laughs> it says to feel... Or show great joy or delight. Yes, yes. You ever got a new car? You ever, well, maybe it was a used car, but it was new to you. You felt great joy or great delight, didn't you? I mean, you took that thing to the car wash all the time. I never will forget that first Volkswagen I ever got. I washed that thing so much, Jody, the paint, I scrubbed the paint off of it. I was happy over that thing. You say a Volkswagen? Yeah, a Volkswagen. <laughs> Boy, I would black the tires up. I would shine them up. I was happy over that. People are happy today over material things, are they not? Get a new house. There's nothing wrong with that. God bless you. Amen. But those things make you joyful. And uh, they bring joy to you. But this morning, God said... Rejoice because our names are written in heaven. Yep, right. You know, it, it makes me feel good when I get in the car and my gas needle is above half a tank, not on the other end. You know, I rejoice because I go to the refrigerator and there's some Mountain Dews in there, amen? And I go to the cabinet and I rejoice because there's some snacks in there. Right. And I go to the freezer and I pull it out. There's some popsicles in there. There's some of them orange sickles and some of them nutty buddies, you know. I rejoice over that. But let me tell you, friends, my greatest rejoicing this morning is because I know yeah. that my name yeah. is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Amen. What is your great joy? Did you know a Christian can lose their joy? Yep. You can lose the joy of your salvation. Yeah. I hope you're not that way this morning, but if you are, please ask Him to restore that. Whatever has came in, please say, God, forgive me and restore that right spirit within me. Yeah. It's good that through Jesus' name that the devils have to flee. And even the Bible says that, that we can do great miracles. Through his name. Yeah. But rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. That's right. Ain't that good? Yeah. Say amen right there. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Lord amen. You with me? Amen. I was beginning to wonder. The greatest wonder, the greatest wonder of all is the reality of salvation. 
The greatest wonder of all is the reality of salvation. Yeah. Because let me tell you, friends, we will battle Satan and the demons as long as we're on this side of eternity. But I'm going to tell you, friends, one day we'll have, we'll have our freedom from him. Yeah. I don't know about you, but he aggravates me. Yeah. You say, well, he don't aggravate me. Well, there's two reasons. Maybe you're not saved. Or maybe you're not where you need to be with God. Because I tell you what, if you're doing something for God, He's going to aggravate you. You know, He's going to aggravate you and tell you that you ain't no good and what you're doing. I mean, nobody's going to listen. I mean, He told me last Sunday, after I left last Sunday morning, He told me that nobody would come back. But He's a liar. Look at you. You're here. Amen. Amen. That's right. I don't like preaching messages like last Sunday. But that's the whole counsel of God. It is. But see, the devil's a liar and there's no truth in him. But rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Amen. Ain't that good? But the, the realization here, the greatest wonder of all is the reality of salvation. The whole point of the gospel message is and the central issue to which all the miracles are pointed because your names are written in heaven. Did you know that God performed a miracle in you? Yeah. When He saved you, that was the greatest miracle of all. That God took an old sinner, an old wretched sinner, yeah. and saved him. Amen. And forgave him of all of his sins. Right. Let me tell you this. The Bible says in many places that God took our sins and they was many. And they were black and they were ugly. Yeah. But when we by faith said, Lord, save me, God took those sins and first of all, He covered them with the blood. Amen. He covered them with the blood. And the Bible says that God took them and threw them behind His back. Now listen to this. How many of you know God is all-powerful? God knows what you and I are thinking right now. Yep. He knows where you're at in your life. He knows what you've done in secret and what you've done in the open. That's right. But the, the, the message of salvation is so powerful that God says that I'll remember those sins no more. Right. In other words, God said, I forgot about them. Ain't that wonderful? There's powerful, there's power in the blood. He said, I throw them behind my back, and in another place, he said, I throw them into the depths of the sea. Amen. To remember, did you know no man has been to the depths of the sea? Nope. He threw them as far as from the east is from the west. They don't meet. Right. Ain't that why are we rejoicing? I'm rejoicing because my name is written in heaven. Ain't that wonderful? It is, right, God. The greatest wonder of all is the reality of salvation that God would love somebody like me. And God would love somebody like you. Right. Alan back there, his his dad. I remember when before Lester got saved, and Brother Larry, and Alan can test about it is, Brother Larry Dennis. I mean, he was burdened about Lester. And he wanted to see Lester have a, uh, have a relationship with Jesus. And I mean, he, was, he would be there. And finally, Lester said, just to get him off my back, I'm going. <laughs> and guess what? That's all it took. Amen. He heard Jesus. He heard the gospel message. And he got saved. Amen. Amen. You see, friends, we can't give up. Did you know because our names are written in heaven that the greatest thing we can do is to share that love. Yeah. To share what God has done for us. Right. And to see somebody else come to know Jesus. 
Wow. That's what it's all about here at Lighthouse Baptist Church. Look, we, we, we ain't some organization or some brotherhood club or whatever, but look, our central goal is here is to seek and to save that which was lost. And that's one thing that I want to see Lighthouse Baptist Church do is evangelize and tell people about Jesus. We can do it on our jobs. We can do it in the stores. We can do it anywhere. Just share the love of Christ because that's the greatest reality is salvation. That God would love an old sinner like me and you. Yeah, bro. And send us his son. Are you happy this morning? Are you rejoicing? Why are you rejoicing? Stand in your feet this morning. A lot of people rejoice. A lot of people are happy when their pocketbooks are filled or when their bank account is full. These days, that's good to be happy about, ain't it? Amen? <laughs> or you're happy because I've got a, such a good retirement plan. Well, I can't wait till I retire. I got this good retirement plan. But let me tell you the greatest, the greatest plan that you can have is the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Right. Amen. Every head bow, every eye closed. Let's do this this morning. While Sister Christine is playing something softly this morning, I wonder this morning, what are you rejoicing in? Do you know Jesus? Do you know that your name is written in heaven? The Bible says in 1 John 5, 13, it says, These things which are written, that you may know that you have eternal life. You see, preacher, I don't even know that you can know that. Sure, you can. By faith, the Bible says that we can know that we have eternal life. I wonder if there'd be one, two, three, or four. Say, preacher, will you pray for me? I'm not sure that my name is in heaven. And I don't want to stand before God and that page be empty. Preacher, pray for me. Would you raise your hand and say, preacher, pray for me. I'm not sure that I'm saved. Look this way this morning. How is your relationship with the Lord? The altar's open. You need to come this morning. Please come. need me, maybe you're not sure, then please see me, Roger, the preacher, and we can let you know how you can know for sure. Thank you for being here today. Amen. Good to see my friend Jerry back there. Amen. Jerry Wade Bennett. There you go. He's one of our uh, sweet homers. Amen. We used to go to church together. 
and uh, good to see him. Amen. Alan, good to see you and your family. Uh, amen. And everybody, praise the Lord. Uh, good to see uh, our members. Amen. And uh, thank you for being here. All right, Sister Michelle. We have prayer cards up front. If you have a prayer request, fill out the card, put it in the box. Prayer warriors pray for those on Wednesday nights. We have the missions jar up front on the table. Anything you put in that jar supports our 10 missionaries that we have. Um, come back tonight, 6 o'clock. We're having our monthly meal tonight. Um, during the monthly meal, we're going to be celebrating our pastor's wives uh, for Pastor Appreciation Month. So be sure to come out, support them, tell them how much you love them. Be sure to bring enough food to share for you know with your family and others. Um, also, there's no choir practice tonight. And then we're uh, collecting change and candy and prizes for the upcoming egg hunt on April 5th. And then the items that we're collecting for our shoe boxes this month are toothbrushes. Um, we're going to be having our vacation Bible school this year, June 22nd, 23rd, and 24th. Um, so be on the lookout for information on that, uh, for volunteers and things that we're going to need. Uh, so just be on the lookout for that. And then um, our annual jubilee, our first annual jubilee, will uh, be coming up July 10th, 11th, 12th, and 13th. So be sure to come out and support that. Um, go ahead and book your vacations around that date and their vacation Bible school. Amen. Days. Praise the Lord. Boy, that was a lot. Amen. Uh, Miss Cindy. Don't get signed up There's a work day going to be April 1st. What April time? April 1st. 8, 9. <clears throat> 8, 30. 8, 30. 8, 30. April 1st, 8, 30. Come out more than here to get things taken care of and tidied up. All right. Work day. Everybody hear that? That's April Fool's Day. Amen. That's right. Now, don't fool so us and just don't come. <laughs> Amen. Tell us you're going to come and then you don't come. Amen. That's not nice. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So, I tell you what. Um, we got a lot coming up in April. Um, we're going to celebrate uh, uh, the Lord's Supper, the first Sunday of April, so I want you to come and be a part of that. Uh, the second Sunday is Easter, and then the third Sunday will be our homecoming. So uh, you just want to be a part of all of those things, amen? So even if you're uh, not a member, we still want you to share those things. Even tonight, you come and share those things with us, and uh, we're going to have some pot roast and taters and carrots and all kind of stuff. Amen. So, anybody got anything else to say? Anybody? Praise the Lord. God's good. Amen. Amen. All right. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Donna, will you close us out? Dear Father, we thank you for what we heard today, Lord. We just uh, pray we use it, Lord. And if we need to be saved, Lord, I pray for that soul that's closest to hell, Lord. I just want to pray for it tonight. Pray for every one safety going on until the next point in time. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.